Okay, so there's been a lot of reports coming out today about backlash from the Eagles players against Doug Peterson for benching Jalen Hurts Sunday night and putting in Sudfeld. And it's justified because, for one, he's just trying to cover it up by making up all these excuses, just being really vague about what he was trying to do. But let's be honest here. As we've had time to reflect, there's only one thing that makes any type of sense. Either he's an idiot or he was just trying to tank. And I'm assuming that he didn't just do that on a whim. So I don't want to go crazy on Doug Peterson because I feel like there's definitely people in the front office that were telling him to do so. So for for me, I can't go too crazy on Doug Peterson. But at the same time, he pro- he's got, just got to be honest and say, look, we wanted to get a higher draft pick. This, our season was done and we want to move up. But he wasn't honest about that. And even if he was... Taking a football, it's just, it doesn't work for the most part. It doesn't make sense because if your team is horrible from the beginning and then you could, and then you can just exacerbate that a little bit by playing younger players a little bit more, fine. But this isn't the NBA where you could just, just go with all young players and just bench the older players once things go down a little bit because it's a 56 man roster. You can't fill it up with all young players and it, the culture you, to get it guys to play for you, it's going to get messed up because there's going to be a whole slew of veteran players you have to have. And they're not going to be happy. And that's going to mess up the whole culture. And that's what we see with the Eagles. Because now the relationship with Doug Peterson and Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is a mature guy, it seems like. He seems like the bon- like bona fide, quintessential quarterback that you want in terms of his attitude and his leadership and all of that. He's been benched for two at Tago Vailoa. So I think he'll be fine. But at the same time, getting benched in, in a game like that when you, you weren't playing great throwing the ball, but you weren't... Some of, there was a drop pass from Rieger on a big play. It was a great, it's a great defense. He was moving the ball. He's, he ran it in a couple times. He definitely did not deserve to get benched. And he's supposed to be their franchise guy. I think he's shown enough to be the guy they look at as their franchise guy. And after Carson Wentz, that whole relationship soured. And it didn't work out with him after he played at an MVP level. You'd think you'd be going all in on the next guy, trying to get your whole support behind him. And moving up three picks in the draft... While that is something that matters, going up in every single round, moving up three picks from nine to six, that is something that matters. The fact that he's not being honest about it, talking about he's still trying to win, it just doesn't make sense. And people going crazy on Sudfeld saying he's trash and stuff, you can't even tell from that because that's the whole point of this. When they were trying to say they were trying to develop Sudfeld and all that, I said that doesn't make sense because even a great quarterback, he might be able to come in and and make some plays late in the fourth quarter. But a lot of the time, when you when you're not prepared to when you're not prepared to start, when you don't get the starters reps all week, when you've been that's cold outside, you're standing on the sidelines, sitting on the bench, you're not ready to play, you're not warmed up, and then you get thrown in the midst of a close game against a team vying for a playoff spot. That's a horrible position to be in, and he's not going to be able to show himself to be as good as he is at all. So I'm not saying he's good, but I'm I'm saying you can't tell. You there's no way to tell from that. That's why I mean no sense on, except for just. The fact that they wanted to tank and taking in football, it just doesn't make sense. So for the Eagles now, it is just going to be a challenge because I've been someone that says, Doug Peterson, he shouldn't even really be on the hot seat. He's won a Super Bowl not that long ago. They made the playoffs the last couple years. This year, their offensive line was ter- had no health and they still want, I mean, they, it was a bad year for them, but for the most part, he's just had a great run in Philadelphia. And you can't overlook somebody that won you a Super Bowl and then got you to playoffs after that. I feel like he deserves a long leash. But after this, it's going to be tough to get it back. If there wasn't a structure from the front office, which I think there was, if there wasn't, though, it, you have to consider getting rid of him because they talk about Miles Sanders was just. He was in the media saying we were just all really confused. They're saying that people were getting held back from going at Doug Peterson. It is going to be tough getting everybody back on the same page. I mean, they're professionals. They're going to get over it. But still, every little bit of motivation counts in football. This isn't basketball where you're playing a game. You're having fun out there. You are in football, too, at the same time. But you're also putting your bodies on the line. And you're risking a lot. You're taking hits week after week after week. And motivation and wanting to play for the coach, that stuff does matter. When people don't like Adam Gase, the team's going to go downhill. Coaches like Pete Carroll that people want to play for, Mike Tomlin, those teams are consistently successful. So this is going to be tough to get over for the Eagles. I'm interested to see what happens. I'm going to follow this saga and see what continues to happen. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, hit the like, and subscribe. Can we get to 1,000 subscribers with this video? We are almost there. Let, please, let's go.